It's great to be with you here all again. <laughs> Before we start, I want to ask the award recipients to join us backstage and line up. Oh, over there. Oh, I'm sorry. You can go to the lovely lady over there. And I think it's time to praise the Lord a little more. Amen? <laughs> it's a real privilege to call ourselves friends of God. Amen? So let's celebrate that fact that we can call him friend. Oh, oh, oh. 
How many of you know there is power in the name of Jesus? Amen. There is victory in the name of Jesus. Woo! Can we take the moment to shout the name of Jesus out? Take Jesus.
Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Have a seat. Hi, Ryan. Hello. How are you? Good. What do you think of that band? Makes um, me want to get my leather pants. Those leather pants are so nice. something. And I think they fit us. Yeah, I think we could swap. We should try that. Maybe for tomorrow's act, yeah, I'll get tomorrow. some leather pants. They're nice. They should fit us well. By the way, what's up with those Canadians? I don't know, Mahar, what's up with them? You know, like, I go to breakfast, they're all around me. I go to lunch, they're all around me. I go to dinner, they're all around me. I go to small groups, they're all around me. I even go to the guy's bathroom, they're there. It's like this verse in the Bible, you know, Lord, where can I go from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I go down to the depths of the sea, you're there. It's, it's like a Canadian invasion. And I'm wondering, like, if all those Canadians, like a hundred people, came here, why wouldn't we made it easier and we did this whole thing in Canada to start with? Right? How do you think I feel? I live in America, in the United States, and they're always above you. They're the USA's hat. Oh, okay, okay. Now I understand the feeling I'm feeling. I'm like you, brother. Then <laughs> can't hide from the Canadians. Please forgive me, I want to come back to Canada next year, okay? They made me do it, it's Steven. It's Steven. Sorry, Tim Cole, sorry, I love you. Okay, quick announcements. So, uh, you know, transportation, I saw a lot of you going to the transportation booth and checking your sheet. Uh, sheet? 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 Check your sheet? Yes. Yeah, sheet the, yeah, paper. You're, you're spell, you're, it's right. It's my right. accent yeah. sometimes. Yeah. That was not a typo. Okay, you know, check whatever it is you need to check just to make sure you're going somewhere or you'll end up going nowhere. <laughs> okay, another joke for tonight after the African joke to yesterday. The America's area, uh, they want you to meet half an hour earlier tomorrow. <laughs> so instead of 3 p.m., you have to meet up at 2.30 p.m. Good luck, Myra. Because supposedly you need to go up and set up a booth. Booth? 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 Booth. 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 You need to go and set up your booth at 2.30, so half an hour earlier. That's never going to happen. But, you know, try. So, you have something for us to read. I right? do. Yalla, I, go ahead. Yeah, I want to start by uh, reading something I came across. It's very profound. Uh, so listen to these words and see if they resonate with you. In this era of fragmentation and discord, let us gather under the banner of truth. Our mission is to be the architects of a brighter future, to instill in the hearts of the youth a resounding belief that their dreams can be achieved. It is not a task for the faint of heart. It requires the unwavering commitment to the ideals of unity and empathy and vision. Do you know who wrote that? Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Okay. That's what happens when you put all your notes from the general sessions and ask for a summary. Oh, wow. Okay. Do you know what Chat GPT is really good at? What? That kind of stuff. But you know what it's not good at? What? Relationships. Ah. But you know who is good at relationships? Worldlink. 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 So you work with YFC USA, but you have a heart 
for the whole world. Tell me more about this. Yeah, that's true. I do work for YFC USA, and a small part of my role there is to work with uh, YFCI on the development team, and I get to work on a project called WorldLink. I am the director of WorldLink, and WorldLink is a partnership between leaders within the movement of Youth for Christ. And so in the USA and Canada, we partner chapters with nations, but it's also available for nation to nation. And a lot of people don't know that, that you can have a relationship with another nation, uh, financially support them, pray for them, and share ideas and resources, and potentially go on trips to visit them, uh, do mutual trainings with your staff. And you have something going on tonight also? We we do have something going on. If you're interested in WorldLink on any level, if you're interested in being a partner, having a partnership, you can come to the Lucky Strike Bowling Alley right after this session. It's open to anyone. But if you currently have a WorldLink partnership, we have a special gift for you in the bowling alley. So stop by the bowling alley. I do not want to bowl alone. So please, somebody come to the bowling alley and bowl with me. I'll come. Okay. Free yeah. bowling. I'll Me be there. Me and you. Free bowling. Yeah. And out of curiosity, what are those orange bags? Those saw... orange bags yeah. are just a practical way for you to put your wallet into the bag or your purse and bring it up here and just set it here. <laughs> Do not take those bags with you. Those need your money left in them and just brought to the front. It goes to support WorldLink. So. Oh, not YFC Lebanon. No, no, no. Well... Okay, I, we I can't mean, share. I'm part of YFC, so okay. yeah, I, it goes to my bank account, but okay. I'll make sure it gets to a safe place. No, Thank those you. are just a gift for you. So you take those, and hopefully that's a reminder to be a WorldLink partnership, or be a partner, or pursue a partnership with another nation. Oh, that's great. And now we have a short video, Correct. right? Yep. Let's see it together. Thank you. That's great. Congratulations, Marcelo, and congratulations, Venya, on this 50 years of ministry and youth for Christ. Now, I just have this feeling that I need to talk to Marcelo a little bit more. I don't think I can just, you know, like we actually have to sit down together. And it just so happens that his daughter is right here with us and can translate. So we just need a couple of more mics, if we can do that, and we'll be one over there. That's great. And Marcelo and I can share. It's easy, because I'm just going to ask the question, and then we'll hear from Marcelo. So Marcelo started, well, he didn't actually start it, but he started ministry way back when, so far back that like long before I was born, when he started, you know? It's like, because he's six weeks older than I am, okay? So he's got much more experience than I do. But he was also the one that, that had the vision for Wake Up Deborah. And Marcelo, I'd love for you to tell us. Talk to us about Wake Up Deborah. How did it start? What was the vision? Can you share that with us? Of course. 
Uh, primeiro, eu queria saber onde estão os nossos irmãos da Coreia. So first, I would like to know where is our brothers and sisters from Korea. Korea. Where are you guys, okay. <laughs> brothers, sisters? Essa história tem a ver com vocês também. So this story has a lot to do with you too. Era o ano de 1995. It was 1995. E nós fomos convidados para participar de um congresso na Coreia. And we were invited to attend a conference in Chamado Korea. Chamado JCOI 95. Called uh, JCOI 95. Eram 4 mil pessoas. 4,000 people. De diferentes países. From different nationalities. E durante o congresso nós somos convidados. And during the conference we were invited. A participar de um grande culto no Estádio Olímpico de Seul. To join a, a huge service in the, uh, in the Está... stadium. In, uh, in Seul. Um culto que começou às 10 da manhã terminou às 10 da noite. The service started at 10 a.m. and finished at 10 p.m. E esse era um culto de consagração de jovens universitários. And uh, young uh, youth people were being um, consecrated to Christ. That, 100 mil that jovens sendo consagrados para a obra missionária. A hundred and thousand uh, young people. Uh, dedicating their lives to God e and to the culto, min missionary work. E durante o culto houve um agradecimento às mães. And during that service there was um, a word of thank you, um, appreciating the prayers of the mothers. As mães que oraram. The mothers who prayed for that moment. E esse agradecimento caiu no coração meu e do pastor Jeremias. And that word. Uh, touched my heart and another friend of mine, a pastor back uh, down in Brazil, called uh, Jeremias Pereira. E ali na Coreia nós tivemos um sonho. And right there in Korea we had that vision, a dream. De convocar mães para orar em favor da juventude brasileira. To ask mothers to come join us in prayer uh, for the Brazilian young. Para que Deus people. levantasse uma geração compromisso. So God could raise a committed um, generation of young people dedicated to this work. nós queríamos ter 25 mil mães. And our goal was 25,000 mothers. Que orasse por 50 mil jovens. Who would pray for 50,000 young people. E 28 anos depois. And 28 years later. Nós temos muito mais de 100, 100 mil mães que oram. We have way more than 100,000 mothers who pray. Em todo o Brasil. All over Brazil. Mais de mil cidades. In more than 1,000 cities in Brazil. Em vários países. And many countries. Onde o, o Desperta Débora já chegou. Where Wake Up Debra has been present. E nós temos jovens que foram resposta a essas essas orações aqui presentes. And we have young leaders that were an answer to those prayers that are present here today. Muitos jovens que são fruto dessas orações estão aqui hoje. Lots of young leaders are here today because of those prayers. E, e, e ocupam cargos de liderança no Brasil. And they are leaders in Brazil. Essa é uma história resumida. And the, this is a this is a summary only the the, the short version of the story. That's that's a little bit too short. Okay, thank you so much. I'll that's, go for it. That's a little bit too short. I can you tell us try to describe to us the impact of Wake Up Deborah on the ministry in Brazil? O impacto foi tremendo. The impact was tremendous. Porque essa, essas mães, essas milhares de mães começaram a orar. Those thousands and thousands of mothers started praying. E é muito difícil contar essa história sem emoção. It's really hard for me to tell this story without getting emotional. Eu poderia contar centenas de histórias, milhares de histórias. I could tell you hundreds and hundreds of stories de jovens que foram salvos, que foram trazidos, consagrados a Deus por causa das mães que oraram. Of young people that were saved or dedicated their lives to the missionary work nós because estamos of those vivendo, mothers that pray. Nós estamos vendo o melhor momento da MPC nos seus 70 anos no Brasil. Why have seen Brazil uh, has been there for 70 years and we are living our best moment for sure e agora deus nos deu uma nova visão and now god has given us a new vision e nós queremos agora pedir mais 200 mil novas déboras we want to reach 200,000 more moms 
for Wake Up Deborah. Que vão orar por um milhão de jovens comprometidos. That will pray for one million young people in Brazil. Pray that. O maior impacto nós estamos vendo na colheita que Deus está nos dando, a colheita. The biggest impact is the um, harvest of the, that we are getting now. Você pode imaginar enquanto nós estamos nas escolas saber que tem mais de 100 mil mães que estão orando por nós. We have a strong ministry at schools, high schools in Brazil, and can you imagine when, that when we are there? We have 100,000 mothers that are praying for us and for our ministry. Nós temos ministério em 120, 130 cidades. Our, we have chapter, Brazilian chapters in around 130 cities all over Brazil. E nós temos Debras em mais de mil cidades. And Wake Up Debras are uh, in almost, more than 1,000 cities in Brazil. Nós temos mais de 2 mil coordenadoras, líderes locais. We have more than 2,000 um, local leaders of this uh, Wake Up Deborah in Brazil. E o trabalho cresce e cresce a cada dia. And this ministry only grows every day. Eu quero incentivar você a chamar as mães para orar no seu país. I want to invite you to call, uh, to uh, invite the mothers from your country to pray for the Nós young people in your country. Nós temos aí a alegria de saber que o Desperta Débora agora é da MPC Internacional. Now Wake Up Deborah uh, has moved from Brazil and it's uh, under the leadership of the YFC International. Eu sei que a Saskia está por aí, Saskia. I know Saskia is here. Where e, are e you, tem, Saskia? E, e tem lá uma, um, a Saskia está lá atrás. Se você quer saber mais She's sobre o Desperta Débora, procura a Saskia, tem lá um... um, um um stand sobre despertar. If you want to know more about it, just go to uh, the booth down there and uh, she's there and can give you all the information about it. E essa aqui, ó, é a nossa é a nossa nosso lema para as escolas. This is the Tudo muda quando você muda. This is our motto for the schools. Everything changes when you change. God bless you. This. Wait, 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 wait. One more thing. One and more. Dave was wearing it yesterday, was, by the way. I was. Yes. Yes. So this is a one opportunity for you, Marcelo, with 50 years of ministry experience. To, you've seen something go from vision to reality. You have seen a ministry bathed in prayer and what happens when it is. Right here is the next generation of women and men that are going to be leading ministries. They're going to be, they're going to be envisioning. They're going to be, the Spirit will be speaking to them about a ministry that he wants them to start to go. Brother, what would you say to them? Oh. Wow. Eu vou dizer o que Torrey Johnson, nosso fundador, falou. I'm going to say what Torrey Johnson, our founder in Brazil, said. Torrey Johnson disse que he said, essa organização, this organization, YFC, caminharia de joelhos. Would walk on their knees. Então, se você quer ser bem sucedido, so if you want to be well succeeded, se você quer ver uma grande colheita, if you want to have a, a huge harvest, a MPC que você lidera tem que caminhar de joelhos. Your YFC, the one that you is our leader, uh, has to walk on your knees. Torre Johnson falou que He said O passado foi muito bom. The past has been great. O presente está maravilhoso. The present is wonderful. Mas o futuro será melhor ainda. But the future will be even better. Os melhores dias ainda não chegaram na MPC. The better days are not uh, here at YFC. Os melhores dias vão chegar com vocês na liderança. The Jovem better Jesus. days are going to come with you being leaders. Deus abençoe vocês. God bless you guys. Thank you, brother.
So we didn't have a chance to properly introduce ourselves to you. Um, my name is Shelton Tellersford, and I am pastoring a small church in Almeida. There's a city nearby Amsterdam. I think we have a slide of a church, don't we? And there's a QR code. I would love to stay in touch with each and every one with you. So if you want to scan it, you can go ahead. So uh, I used to work for Youth for Christ before I started pastoring a church. Director for Youth for Christ in the Netherlands. And uh, the natural director of Youth for Christ asked me to do the uh, GA, the band. So I was wondering, who can I ask to join me on this conference? And I could, have, could not have think of anybody better than this group right here in front of you. They are called A Night with a King. They started having worship sessions in all of the Netherlands. And they are an amazing group. They are wonderful musicians. But what I love about them is their heart that goes out to God. So they have also a slide where you can find their music. I think their music, I think and their information. So in the next, this next song that we want to sing for you, I just want to introduce them to y'all. Is that okay? Is that okay? And on the keys, we have Patrick from France joining us. Can he get a hand? All right.
grateful heart, we stretch ourselves out to you. Say, give thanks. Knowing that you are the only one who can provide. Give thanks. You are the beginning and the ending. We love you, our Father. Africa in the house today? Yeah. Yeah. My name is Cheone Sumasuka and I'm the regional director for um, Southern Africa. My name is Luca Dushemi Lugava, East Africa Legion Director. And it's an awesome privilege to stand before you and just uh, represent what God is doing uh, in our area. Um, and I just want to say something that, you know, Hillary, our um, area director, couldn't be here, uh, but he sent us with two chaperones. Um, Dr. Uh, and Mrs. Diran Ajay to keep an eye on us uh, to make sure that we're behaving ourselves. And I think, I think we have been so far. Uh, so let's give, a, let's give a hand for them. Give hand. Yeah. From Nigeria. Yes, they're, they're from Nigeria. That's right. Um, yeah. And so what, what nations um, do we have in Africa, Luke? Yeah, we have uh, Burundi from East Africa. Please raise your flag if you have it. Ethiopia. Kenya, the pride of Africa, that's what you want to like to do. Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda. Oh, yes. wow, that's awesome. Do we, do we have Cote d'Ivoire here? Yes, we have Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire, awesome. And that's, that's the east. Now, if you go down south, um, we have um, Botswana. Do we have Botswana in the house? Botswana, Malawi. Where is Botswana? Namibia, yeah. Yeah. South Africa, mm. South Africa doing amazing things in the rugby, and Zimbabwe. Let me just, uh, in Ocean of India, Ocean, we have Madagascar. Where's Madagascar? Est-ce que nous avons l'île Maurice? Mauritius. Yeah, Mauritius. And, uh, and, you know, we had some nations that couldn't make it. And uh, to all those nations that are watching online, Liberia, what's up, Guinea-Bissau, um, Angola, um, and uh, DRC, South Sudan, and Zambia. We're here representing you, representing Jesus the Most High. Yes. And so these are the nations in Africa. And um, as you can see, some of us, uh, some of us couldn't make it. But we have so many nations that are represented here. And we have Ghana in the house. Ghana! This is Africa for you. And we're going to see what God is doing in this area. Then you have Guinea-Bissau. 
We have uh, Liberia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, those on another year, but we are representing them. Then we have Bene, Bene. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see what God is doing in Africa. Hi. This is Felix Asante Okai from Ghana. And I am glad to share how the Young Catalyst Development Program has profoundly influenced my life. I started this program as a young leader trying to find my feet in leadership. This project and this program has granted me the necessary skills, necessary knowledge to help me and equip me in my leadership journey. It has helped me enough to also impact and influence young leaders around me. Those are my friends and other friends I came into contact with in school. And they have also been a blessing out of the things I have learned in this program. I believe strongly that if real life projects are also inculcated in the program, it would give leaders the real life experience to also develop programs or develop projects that would give them a practical experience of, of, of implementing some of the things they learn in the program. Yeah, the mic is trying to play games with me. <laughs> so when we say Africa war, yeah, you say Africa war, yeah, right? <laughs> Africa war, yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Mpatso. I'm from Malawi, the warm heart of Africa. <laughs> so Africa is a beautiful continent. It's not a dark continent. It is a land full of opportunity, potential, and hope. Yes. And I am here to talk about this continent and the great work that Youth for Christ is doing there. Really glad that we are together. And so much is indeed happening in the Africa area. Where do I begin? Let's hear a story from Benin. Hello everyone. Hello. Okay, uh, my name is Mary and I'm from Benin. <laughs> oh, oh, you can do better. Thank you. Please, please. <laughs> uh, I speak French, so mm -hmm. uh, so I met Christ two years ago. Uh, it was through a youth catalyst. His name is Tico, and uh, since then. My life has never been the same because my family was scattered. It was like hellfire and I was lost and hopeless. But now I'm telling others about my story and how Jesus transformed my family. Thank you. Praise God, praise God. We thank God for people like Digo, who shared Christ to Mary. And it is amazing to have one young person who has been impacted, impacting others as well. Amen. Amen. Let me talk a bit about the Young Catalyst Development Program, YCPD. It is now in its second year and man, we, we are growing. We are seeing young leaders like Mary there being impacted and this is by the YCDP uh, team working with the area training team and many others with the help of the Holy Spirit to touch every part of Africa. Isn't that amazing? We have 58 young catalysts from 43, rather 23 nations working with 43 mentors growing in faith and it helps us effectively serve with God's leading, we are also starting new ministries and strengthening existing ones. Oh my God. I'm pregnant. What will I tell my, my mother? Oh, 
Oh, uh, things young people go through in Africa and all over the world. We can only imagine what such young girls go through. One Hope research shows globally one in 10 girls from 13 to 15 years are already sexually active. And it's three times higher among 15 and 19 year olds. We have the youngest population in Africa and we must do everything we can to come alongside them. So we'll hear from leaders from crisis pregnancy ministries just sharing some of the challenges that are leading to these statistics and also how they are uh, going along trying to solve this problem. So they will introduce themselves in a minute and share with us what is happening in their nations. Goedenavond allemaal. Molueni. Sanibonani. I just greeted you in three of the South African, of the three, langu three languages of the 11 official languages in, in South Africa. So, um, my name is Monia. I am from uh, George in the Southern Cape of South Africa. And we, uh, I'm involved in a crisis pregnancy center. Um, as um, Patso said, the, um, the statistics are really scary. And I, we, we see that young people have not or don't have a safe place where they can ask the questions um, without being judged. And so our challenge is really to provide a safe space for our young people and for us to become comfortable with having uh, those conversations about their sexual choices. I don't think um, there's a lot of knowledge about the risks amongst our young people of the physical risks, the emotional risks, the spiritual risks about becoming sexually active at such a very young age, and we should also be able to respond to that. So in an event of a crisis pregnancy, th those safe spaces should be there in our cities, in our towns, um, for young people. And we've responded by the center that, we, that um, Dean's wife, Lori Edwell, has started in our area. Um, and um, it's been going for about 25 years. But part of it is counseling um, in order for that young person to make an informed decision, giving them enough information for them to make an informed decision about their pregnancy, but also provide care and um, ongoing care, even in physical ways to support them um, in the decisions that they have to make. So, um, and I just want to say, it's just as important that we have these conversations with our young men as well. So I want to just encourage everybody to also reach out to the young men in our nations so that they will know how to conduct themselves in a, many, in a manner worthy of Christ. Amen. Next. In a minute. Praise God. Praise God. Buwana Yesu Asifiwe. Amen. My name is Shiko Kanyi. I am from Kenya. I am a young leader. And we do have CPMK, Crisis Pregnancy Ministries, Kenya. We have a safe house for teen moms where we do have discipleship classes. We, have, we teach them skills and we even teach them uh, computer studies. Majority of our teenagers get pregnant because of poverty. They need some sanitary towels, and the only person who's willing to give them money would want something in exchange. And so they find themselves pregnant. Um, when they get pregnant, you know, it's a taboo because you are a teenager and you ought to be in school thinking about your future. And so they find themselves kicked out in their communities. And so CPMK gets the opportunity to take them and we get to have a safe house where we then in, instill them the skills of beadwork, um, tailoring, um, cooking, and so many other things. So that by the time they give birth and then they get their bouncing baby boys and girls, they are equipped to continue with their lives. They have hope to know that they can actually feed their children and that they can even live longer and cater for them. Amen. Amen. 
You, you can hear more from heart. Maybe you might ask her. 30 seconds. 30 seconds for you. Okay, when I say Sali Bonani, you say Yebo. Sali Bonani? Yebo! Sali Bonani? Yebo! Okay, my name is Priscilla, and I volunteer um, with an organization under Youth for Christ called Life Choices. So as these wonderful women have described what pregnancy crisis um, organizations are about, so it's basically the same thing. We also have a program called Undiluted, which is basically just shared amongst different teens and schools on sexual choices and what God had designed sexuality to be. So yeah, uh, could we just take like five seconds to pray for our teen moms and then I can just wrap up, okay? Uh, let's pray. Father, I just wanna thank you that we get this opportunity as believers to come together and pray for the issues that are happening here and all around the world, Lord, and concerning our young people, Lord, where they are lost and looking for things that are not of you. So, Father, we just bring these teen moms, Lord, that you may bring provision, you may bring truth, you may bring courage over them, that they may know that there is hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. So, as... Uh Thank you for listening. That's uh, part of the stories that we have from Africa. As I'm stepping down from the stage, we'll have the band just doing a Jabulani song. Just a bit of that. And as we get on with the program, many thanks to you and God bless you. مساء الخير أنا وين العرب موجودين بقوة مساء الخير أنا اسمي جميل من العراق بغداد أنا منسق خدمة الشباب للمسيح بالعراق واليوم راح أقرأ من الكتاب المقدس من روميا في معاش Good evening I am Jamil from Iraq Baghdad I am coordinator of YFC Iraq I will thank you Thank you. I will read the Bible um, in Arabic. فأني أقول بالنعمة المعطالي لكل من هو بينكم أن لا يتراءى فوق ما ينبغي أن يتراءى بل يتراءى إلى التعقل كما قسم الله لكل واحد مقدارا من الإيمان فإنه كما في جسد واحد لنا أعضاء كثيرة ولكن ليس جميع الأعضاء لها عمل واحد هكذا نحن الكثيرين جسدا واحدا في المسيح وأعضاء بعضنا لبعض كل واحد للآخر ولكن لنا مواهب مختلفة بحسب النعمة المعطى لنا النبوءة فبالنسبة إلى الإيمان 
أم خدمة ففي الخدمة أم المعلم ففي التعليم أم الوعظ ففي الوعظ المعطي بسخاء المدبر في اجتهاد الراحم فبسرور المحبة فلتكن بلا رياء كونوا كارهين الشر ملتسقين بالخير ودين بعضكم بعضا بالمحبة الأخوية مقدمين بعضكم بعضا في الكرامة أمين Good evening brothers and sisters Today I would have loved to be with you in Amsterdam it's been a while since we last met face to face. And um, in between our last General Assembly and today, we had COVID and lockdown. But for some of us, particularly from the global south, the problem persists and it's like we are still in the lockdown. Why? Because we are not allowed to travel and we cannot get the visa. But despite the, those challenges, I believe we can still be together with each other. Even as I share this message this evening, may God help us ready to go with each other. And I want to start with an old saying that if you want to go faster, go alone. But if you want to go further, go together as a team. And a few years ago with my young kids, we developed a phrase that would say that we are Christians, we have God, and we have each other. I want us to read Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 10. And I pray that God will guide us as we go through his word and we read his word. From verse 3. For by the grace given me, I said to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather... Think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the, God, with, the, with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have the same function. So in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Verse 10. Be devoted to one another in love, one one another above yourself. And that is the word of God. As individuals or as a ministry, we are part of the body of Jesus Christ and we have a mandate to fulfill. We have the great commission, Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20. Each one of us was created by God for good works, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Each one of us must bear fruits, that is the Gospel of John chapter 15, verse 16. We have many responsibilities and challenges of all sorts. In our personal lives, in our families, in the community, there are lots of responsibilities and challenges, and we are always in the battle lines. We are involved in the spiritual warfare. But also we are at uh, the market. We are in different parts of, of the world fighting different battles. Unfortunately, in our struggles, most of us find ourselves in the cold, beaten up and tormented by trials, so lonely and isolated. Others, some of us, like to isolate themselves, and I want to say that is recipe for disaster. We are already being treated to the best taste of what it means to be together through the morning devotions as we go through the book of Philippians. This passage in Romans, coupled with other scriptures like Ephesians and 1 Corinthians, really makes it crystal clear that we belong to one another and we need each other. The warmth of being together with each other, though at times not in a physical sense 
can take away the feeling of isolation and the cold that comes with it. If there was a man to be in great distress, that man should be poor when he wrote the epistle to Philippians. Why? Because he wrote this when he was in prison. His body was in chain, but the fellowship with God, with Timothy, with Epaphroditus, and with the Philippians, together with awareness that he was suffering for the gospel, brought such joy and warmth in his heart that you see his, him expressing sheer joy. He was in jail. Yes, his body was in jail. Yet, his heart and soul were free. And I pray today that despite all our challenges and the problems that we face, they may not go away. Poverty may not go away. The sickness may not go away. The torments of life that you are enduring may not go away. But, but may the fellowship with God, aware that you are in the ministry for, that God called you into, but also uh, feeling the warmth and support, the prayers of the brothers and sisters who are with you, may this give you freedom, like Paul when he writes to, to Philippians. Our scripture passage this evening, Paul says that though we are many, we form one body, and that is verse 5, and each member belongs to all others. He continues to urge the church in verse 10 to be devoted to one another in love. This simply put, they have no choice but to be together with each other. If, we, if one suffers... Or suffer. If one has reason to celebrate, the whole body has reason to celebrate. All must give everything to support everyone to grow and function optimally. This togetherness should lead us to the following, and I want us to look at these four reasons why being together with each other becomes so crucial, so important for you and for me as we go on in our journey as Christians. Number one, being together with each other helps us to grow together. Coming together with different gifts should help the body to grow. This body of Christ is the kingdom of God. The growth of the body of Christ should be our focus as in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, where he's talking about all these different gifts. When brought together in the body, they should be building everybody. And this should be done, focusing on the body of Christ, the kingdom of, God, of Christ, instead of our small, small empires and parochial interests. The coming together with each other is for the common good, which is our growth to the full measure of Christ. And this is better captured in the epistle of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 to 14. You have something that helps me to grow and I have something that helps somebody else to grow. We need each other and there is no other way. If we are to grow as individuals and as ministries, then we have no other choice. I need you, you need me, we need each other, we must go together. Number two, this coming together to go with each other or together with each other is best expressed and captured when we give to each other. And Romans chapter 12, verse 8, he talks about it. When you read Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 20, you see Paul talking about, about giving. But the Bible is full of lessons how we must be prepared to serve the needs of each other and the needs of the world. In Romans chapter 12, he talks about the gift of giving and of serving others. I believe COVID-19 left lessons for all of us, which are too many to share in our limited time. Lessons of how people suffered, but also lessons of generosity, which transforms or transformed lives of many for the glory of God. In Rwanda, lockdown meant lockdown. We had no money. We had no idea how everything was going to turn out. But I met with the leadership, and we talked about where do we go? We have about 200 staff. 
We have so many people that depended on the ministry, like the widows who had HIV, like the kids from poor families that depended on us providing at least lunch at school. So there were lots of questions. What do we do with our volunteers? But we said, it's time for us to sell, to, to sell or sing together. And we decided that whatever little was available, we are going to share with each other. And we decided that we need to talk to our friends from far and near to support this initiative. And throughout the lockdown in Rwanda, particularly from 2020 in March until 2021 in November, except some of the staff who opted out of the program, all YFC families had enough support, they had enough food, the volunteers had food, the, the, these, the widows, the HIV widows, we gave them support, we supported their families, and also we supported the, the families that were in the sponsorship program, particularly focusing on the most vulnerable. But let me tell you the benefit of that. The benefit of that were the volunteers who joined our staff and they went out to do some of the activities that were allowed during the lockdown. What were those activities? Building homes for the homeless. Yes, where people have understood that to be together, you can go and join somebody whose house is falling apart, particularly the elderly, and help build the house. And when they did that, they mobilized teenagers and they were able and they were happy to go out because for them that was another way of gaining freedom. They went to build homes. But even on that project, the gospel was shared. Some of them were invited to go and do farming, which was also exciting, a way for them to get out of their lockdowns. And the gospel was shared. Let me tell you what happened. Some of them gave their life to Christ. Together with each other is to know our colleagues' best needs, and respond with what the Lord gave to us. Philippians became partners with Paul in the gospel through giving. Today there are people in ministry who may not know where their next meal will be coming from. People who supported YFC Rwanda in that program, they gave generously, as per Romans chapter 12, verse 8. Philippians gave generously to support Paul in ministry. Philippians expressed their togetherness with Paul in giving. Indeed, the Philippians understood this old YFC saying that to give is to let your heart go where your feet cannot go. Where are you with the gift of giving to those in need? Do we support each other? Are we together with each other in giving? Thirdly, coming together or going together with each other, we go together with other members of the body of Christ to the battlefield. When you read Philippians chapter 1, verse 5, you notice that Philippians were partners with Paul. They prayed for him. You also see it in Philippians chapter 1, verse 19. In the war against Amalekites, and I want us to uh, remember this story in Exodus chapter 17, verses 12 to 13. In this war, Joshua led the military to go and confront the enemy. But Moses had to be praying for these people. And as he went to pray, he got so tired, standing up and praying and raising, you know, he had to raise up his hands, the, or as long as his hands were raised up, Joshua and the army were winning. As long as he could not hold his hands up, Joshua and the army were losing. So the Israelites came up with a plan they brought a rock on which Paul, uh, I mean Moses had to sit. They did that. But Aaron and Hor came and surrounded Moses, one to the right, another one to the left. And they held his hands up. As long as the hands were raised up, Joshua and the military were winning. At the end of the day, the war was won. What are the lessons to learn there? It wasn't only Joshua and the military. It wasn't only Moses. It wasn't only uh, Aaron and his colleague. It was the whole community, each performing their own functions. They went with each other, and together the battle was won. And I have something for us to ponder and think about here. 
can you imagine how many leaders, some of them young leaders, who are on the front lines of youth evangelism, and unfortunately, they find themselves lonely with no support. Some of them have no one to pray for them. Prayer warriors have no one to provide a seat for their tired bodies. And they can no longer raise up their hands for they are so tired and there is no one to stand beside, besides them to hold up their hands. Maybe you are that leader, exhausted and with no one to help. And the devil continues to steal the souls of young people in your community. You feel so discouraged. You feel so disappointed. You feel so much isolated with nobody to care. And maybe you're wondering where are the board members? Where are the volunteers? And maybe you are that voice that is crying where are our neighbors and brothers and sisters who confess to, to care? Maybe you are heavy laden today. We want to stand together with each other and pray for each other. Today there is a need for us to evaluate how we have stood with our neighbors who are tired and who are on the front line of youth ministry, battered by the scars of the war against the devil. And we should rethink our ways. Some of these people are severely beaten and those that are severely beaten can be an evangelist on Wall Street or Broadway in New York. It can be an evangelist on Champs-Élysées in France. It can be an evangelist on the streets of Amsterdam. It can be an evangelist in the war stricken uh, Ukraine, war ravaged Syria, Goma in Congo. Whoever you are, we want to go with you to the battlefield for the salvation of the young people of your community. But besides praying for our neighbors, we need to figure out how we can go with each other. The battle is so severe, so serious. And unless we stand together, we go with each other, we'll fail. Like the old saying says, together we stand, divided we fall. Lastly, this coming together helps us to govern, or to grieve, and rejoice with each other. Again, in Romans 12, and the whole chapter of Philippians, but I want to focus on Romans 12. He said, lead diligently with compassion and love. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility. We always talk of the functions of the board as governance and we focus on policies, oversight, accountability, etc. We accept the board to evaluate the management in light of how many kids were raised, how much money was raised, how it was managed, all of that. It's true. But did you know that the board has the, role, the, has the role of pastoral care to the national director? And they must ensure that the staff are also spiritually and emotionally taken care of. Did you know that? I want to take it a step further. Suppose we consider a 360 degrees accountability system where what is happening in the life and performance of my leader or of my junior is also my responsibility. And I should have a say in it. How about holding each other accountable? How about a Rwandan comforting an Indian and a Brazilian holding an Australian accountable? I'm not talking about dismantling the statutory lines of accountability, but instead, I'm talking about each one of us accepting to be vulnerable and transparent to one another and to allow them to speak into our lives and how we also do ministry. An old song that I heard many years ago in Youth for Christ goes like, you know, says this, happy to bear, happy to share one another's burden. That's why we are here. Are you weak and heavy laden? Come but with a load of care. Take it to the Lord in prayer. We are here to pray for one another. We are here to console each other. We are here to comfort each other. We are here to encourage each other. That is why we are here. That's why we must be together with each other, but even to help each other to be accountable. I don't know how many of you are going through tough times in your life, 
but I'm sure of one man who has had to rely on help from friends from afar and near. He had to rely on those friends to survive the torrents of life that he has had to endure multiple times. Help came from junior staff like the kitchen staff, the cleaners, the security guys. You know, help came from uh, the office staff, but also help came from pastors, from senior staff, from the board, from the international leadership. That man is the man speaking to you right now. Early this month, I remember a brother in Christ thousands of miles away from where I live. This brother called me and I had the opportunity to cry to him. Two weeks ago, a friend from one Christian organization in Rwanda took me out for dinner. I had someone to speak to and someone to comfort and pray with me. And I want to, to talk to you, my brother. Don't be on this journey alone. We are one body. We must be devoted to one another. What means that you can come here crippled by personal issues, ministry failures, or defeat, and then you go back where you came from the same way, you go back with the same issues. I want to encourage each one of us to share with friends so that we can pray for one another. I want us to express how we believe in this unity of believers by coming together and we pray for one another. You may be here with a lot of issues. I'm not sure what issue you have. Maybe you find yourself you're not going spiritually because of isolation. Maybe you find yourself you are having nobody to give to you or you're not giving to anybody in the ministry and you are still crippled in your giving or you're not even receiving and you struggle and you're wondering what next? Maybe you are here on the battlefield of youth evangelism. You find defeat every day, but defeat may not only be in youth ministry. It could be defeat in your own life, in your personal life, and you are struggling every day. We are here to pray for you. Or you find even in your accountability, there is nobody, there is no friend to be with you on this journey. We want to pray for one another. Brethren, as Christians, we belong to each other. We can't run away from that, and we must be devoted to one another. In 2015, my wife died and left me with very young children and with a daughter who was at college far away. These kids, at that time, 12, 11, and 7 years, we came up with a phrase that has really become so important for us since then. We believe that we are Christians. We belong to God. We believe that in our journey, we have each other. These kids have continued to encourage me with the same words till now. We have each other. You and I, we have each other. And we must go together. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe you, are, you want someone to pray with. Maybe you want to share with someone. Maybe you want to give to somebody. Maybe you want to support somebody. But may we be together to be able to lift each other's hands up. Maybe we need to come together to provide a seat for somebody who is hurting. It's a time for us to be together because indeed, united we stand, divided we fall. May God bless you. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Today I would have... Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Are you feeling okay? Are you enjoying the, the vast number of cultures in this place? For those that don't know me, my name is Irene Aliso. Thank you. Um, Africa Spiritual Formation Coordinator. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Tell your neighbor we're going to pray. I came with a bag of goodies here, but they are symbolic. In this room, we have more than three nations, more than five nations. 
And we are going to pray for one another. But you're not going to pray for your nation. You're going to pray for another nation. We're going to take a moment and ask the Lord to give you a name of a nation to pray for. Amen. The Holy Spirit is in our midst and he's going to show each and every one of us who can you pray for. So let's take just 30 seconds or so. But before we do that, I'm going to toss. Has any of you ever played the game hot potato? Yes, yes. So I have a light potato here that I'm going to toss out. But every time you get it, you just focus on any of the nations here. It has nations. They're very small, but it's symbolic. And you pray. In the meantime, if you don't have the, the, any of these bowls yet, there'll be uh, prayer items displayed on the screen, and you can pray. But you're not praying for your nation. You're praying for somebody else. Tell your neighbor we're here together. And we're praying together. Amen. So if I could ask that we just be quiet for a bit. I'm going to throw this out. And you are going to pray for a nation. You just pass it on. Don't sit with it and say, this is my hot potato. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so let's take a moment and just focus. Focus on all the stories you've had this, this entire time we've had to, together. Focus on all the faces that have come to mind. And let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord show you. When the ball comes to you, just take it. Don't play with it. Be serious about it. Pray for a nation that is not your nation. Pray for... That there will be shalom, wellness, well-being and safety, happiness and favor, completeness and peace among our nations. There will be accountability. There will be love. There will be genuine care for one another. There will be a restoration of joy for ministry. A strengthening of feeble knees. There'll be an awareness of the body of Christ. A willingness to share. Jesus. 
Sandla Agua Lulegi Uti Upuma Searching for purpose away from home, hoping, hoping in things that will fade. No guilt and regret won't leave you alone. Now you're Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that John 17 reminds us that we are one body, that just as Jesus prayed that we might be one body, Father, today we remember our brothers and sisters, our friends and family in places where there's no strength, where they're discouraged. It's not just financial needs, Lord. It's emotional needs we pray for. It's not just financial needs, Lord. It's strength to continue in ministry. It's not just about what's going well. It's also about the tough times, Lord. We come before you praying for our friends, our family, our YFC volunteers and staff. Father, we speak strength right now, that love will surround them, that strength to go on. One more young person to minister to, Lord. One more family to visit. One more prayer to make. One more heart to mend. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that healing will flow where strength's been left. Lord, we pray that in you will be lacking nothing, that the joy of your salvation being restored in every youth center, Lord, that has served for so long, they don't see the vision anymore. We pray that that light be ignited again. We pray that there'll be a newness. Thank you for gathering us together this entire week. The fire, the light that's come through our hearts may it remain even as we continue to minister one to another. Receive our worship this evening. Receive our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. So we want to just take some time to worship. If you want to, you can stand on your feet with us. And declare that the Lord is our shield. He is our savior. He is our strength. And we will bless the Lord forever.
with me from all fear.
Amen. Amen. And we are made out of his holiness, within his holiness. Um, so the, for the next song, um, we just going to have a little blast. Are y'all ready for that? Yes. I know we're in the, y'all were in the worship, but praise is good, right? Amen. Amen. All right. This song is called Glorious. Y'all might know it. If y'all don't, just look at the lyrics. They are right there. Come on. Are we ready? Hey.
done right. We're gonna bring some salsa. Drama, Latino, brothers and sisters. Come on. All about the glory of Yeah.